airlock opening? <laughs> you know, I mean, boy, couldn't she be back home fighting the Amish Liberation Front instead? <laughs> uh, wow, where to go with this? Okay, with her cybernetics shut down, the nanites no longer have anything to play off of. They start becoming confused and just kind of meander around her occipital lobe and whatever else is back there. Uh, Joe, not knowing about her internal conflict, is still pretty much bent on twisting her little neck. Unpleasant guy, that Joe. Uh, let's see. Meanwhile, back at Max. <laughs> I forgot about that guy. Yeah, uh, Max is uh, trying to avoid extremely dangerous electrical current as he opens up. Uh, did we ever name this robot? Um, the rogue. Hmm? The rogue. The rogue. The rogue. The rogue. Uh, the rogue. I like the rogue. Why not? Yeah, the rogue works great. Okay, he's basically opening up the back panel on Georgia and uh, poking around with his. Uh, multi-molecular shifting tools. You know, I mean, a jewel of screwdriver said it's not going to cut it in here. It's got to have something that can loop in and move around and give you a little readout so you know what you're doing. You know, um, kind of like after Earth. So he's, uh, he's in there working on that, and then he finds another virus. That damned Amish liberation front. No. Uh, basically, he's just sitting there trying to keep from getting electrified while telling the robot to open up all of the uh, airlocks except the one that's keeping him breathing. You know, it's like, damn, I kind of like Julie. But the show must go on. Alrighty, um... Try to work with that. <laughs> As Julie is shutting down all of her cybernetics, the failsafes start popping up in there. Hey, are you sure you want to continue with this process? Are you positive? Um, finally, the dreaded paper clip pops up in the corner <laughs> and says, you seem to be having problems with AIs. Do you want to seek help? You know, she goes to hit the no and continue shutting down, but her mind's fuzzy, she's getting strangled, she's running out of the air, and she's done what she's never before done and said, yes, I would like some help. Suddenly, everything freezes. Joe stops mid-torsion on her neck. The airlocks close, and she gets a little message. You have contacted the help system. And she feels this presence of massive amounts of AIs who all, you know, they want to protect humans. They're Asimov safe. And they realize the threat of these two viruses and the people trying to cause it. So the collected AIs of the different systems and all that start focusing and debugging on the program. Meanwhile, Max is trying to take out the, the central processing unit of the station to just stop all communications and stop it from spreading. And as he yanks out the last thing, he realizes all his cyber information that's been keeping them current and happening goes dead at the same time. They think they're just, you know, they created a black zone and he finds Julie and Joe's just still frozen and kind of has blue screen of death on his cyber eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and they head back to the ship and, you know, they load up, okay, we need our data coordinations, nothing will load. They try and connect to the hypernet that everything's connected to to find the data, nothing's there. So, you know, we'll, we'll go old school, we'll plot by, well, that star's in this position, and we'll, you know, just start the drive until we get out of the dead zone. And they go, and it takes two or three hours, and they're still in the dead zone. You know, they're starting to get worried, and they decide. Nice. They start to get worried, they're in the dead zone. Did they have a virus with them? No, um, all the viruses seem to have been destroyed, and they didn't spread to them. They checked each other, and they were safe. But the connective, I'm stealing from Shock Mercenary, the hypernet, that the whole system relays uh, information instantaneously, isn't connecting to them anymore. They're thinking just this node of it's dead and they're trying to get back to where they can connect and like find out where they are in plot, of course. But they've traveled two or three hours at the semi ludicrous speed and they're not reconnecting them. Okay. But have they made this trip before? Is this like a common thing to go to this other planet? 
Um, yeah. Okay, so they, they kind of know their way back. They've got a they've got a general idea. They start going back and they have they still don't have any connection. Obviously they're freaking out, they could explode at any moment they're in the middle of space. But um, as it's been proven before, um, when one threat diminishes another you know, rises, and I think that for all these AI, AIs, I think that they would all be secretly controlled by one entity, so there's no such thing as a, as a good AI, because it, you said that they want to protect humans, but so did the others, and they violated the three laws, right? They so, have to protect humans from themselves, but an Right. So I think that instead of, so they think that they're, they're safe from the virus, they're done, it's fine, but what they don't know is that they're actually the carriers. The AIs have figured out that, oh, these little humans, they've, they've figured out that what we're trying to do, so they put the, the just a, you know how you can be a carrier of a disease? So it's, like the, that. it's the nanites, they're carry, she's carrying yeah, the nanites she's, back she's with her. she's carrying the nanites, right? She's yeah. carrying them. Yeah. And how do you they, flush out a molecule size robot? Yeah, see they're still in there and they don't, so they don't know, and the only way that the nanites are affecting the group is that they're losing all their connection, and that they do not suspect it. That's all. Uh, is it just me, or did something get jumped over in there? It, it doesn't matter. Okay. What, what is We're having fun. Yeah. What is this? What is <laughs> Okay, uh, so they're, they're hurtling back toward Earth, and they're carrying Julie, at least, is, is carrying these nanites um, that uh, when, they, when they land will spread and infect, presumably. Um, but they, but no, neither of them know that they're still carrying. Uh, let's see. What happened to Joe? Joe's, Ooh, Joe stop. remained frozen on the, uh, yeah, yeah. In the in, blue screen. Yeah, okay. blue screen. <laughs> well, I mean, they kind of flush them off the airline or something. They yeah, have struggled out. So they're trying to figure out what to do, and so I think Joe is in the ship with Julie and Max. No, just Max. And no, yeah, Joe got left behind. Okay, Joe got left. So Max, uh, Max starts fiddling with the computers on the the ship, and 
figures out he can override the local um, uh, buoys that tell where everything is so that now the ships are drifting way off course and that protects them from the pirate ship but it gets them lost out into the Urt cloud and they're wandering around out there and they find a giant space station that's never been used. The AI's built it and put it out there ready for humanity to use and nobody showed up. Never made it on the list of places, destinations. So as they're you know, exploring this wonderful new world and all that, the uh, Joe shows up. Is that, oh, did I get that? Yeah, Joe shows up, right? He's, he's from the other ship. From the, o from the other ship. He's found his way over to this, uh, this you know, other uh, space station. How did so, he turn off the blue screen of death? So, so what's, <laughs> hard, hard reset. what Joe is saying is that the AIs have become overly overlords now and are pushing and trying to make things change and all that. So they've taken the space station and put it back on the grid and now they have all these uh, miners and, and other planetary uh, uh, mining camps that are sending in ships to start replenishing all the supplies throughout this region of the area and they're going to build up this area as a, as a manufacturing hub that's going to like be a dynamic place that's really going to make everything better and the AIs are just you know really trying to make everything so much better and they're just basically in a situation where you know, Julie can't go back home. She's going to infect the world. They're going to have this wonderful environment. Ten minutes? Okay, thank you. So they have to, you know, basically get this space station up and running and start using the AI and the resources that they're coming in to start building, you know, a, a response to this AI that just keeps, you know, making things better and better and yet not... Uh, kick off the, uh, the, uh, the virus and get that back to Earth. So as they're working through the details on how to defeat the AI and sort of put the, uh, put the AIs back in the box, so to speak, they, they keep running across technologies in the space station that are farther advanced than anything that anybody's seen before. Apparently the AIs that built this thing were just, you know, kept prop uh, propagating new ideas that never went out anywhere else. So with this new AI, they... Okay, so Julie is carrying the nanites and it's contagious, right? So as soon as she gets to Earth, everyone's gonna get it. That means Max has it. So her and Max both have it. The AIs have used this, this abandoned base as sort of their hub and they're bringing... There are people coming. They're, the AI is having ships delivered with all the the raw materials and that we would reproduce more AI and then send them across the solar system to basically rein in humankind in general and do whatever AIs do to humankind when they go rogue. Um, so as both her and Max have it, they have, have the, the nanites and they know that if they go back to Earth or any of these ships go back to where humankind's are, is, humankind is, it's going to spread the nanites and the virus further. So, so. EMP time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, wouldn't that solve the nanite issue? Theoretically? Depends on the model. Or like uh -huh. Electromagnetic pulse would shut down all electronics. Uh, anyway. But then again, they're in, they're in space. They're in the middle of space, and there's, you know, life support systems, oxygen systems, and all this stuff that if you use EMP, it's going to shut all that down, directly. They could be organic, organic yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they could just figure, okay, we are death for humanity. Son, let's go. That's, that's where you, you ruin it. You ruin that. Oh, I, um, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how they're going to get from the Oort clouds of the sun. <coughs> yeah. I'm sure they could fly there, though. Um, just, I'm sorry. Just jump out into space. It's always an option. Someone but, you know, Max loves Julie. Off. Max loves Julie, and I'm handing it off. I'm not going to be saying that. Okay, so the point of this little nanovirus is to make easier, it's humans easier to control. Um, and first what's happening with Julie, as we saw before, is that she was becoming easily easier and easier to control. And then Max got it, and now he's starting to be, you know, more easy, easily controlled. Now, just like any virus, though, every, even though 
Um, most people are not immune to most viruses. Everybody in humanity has, there's at least one or two people in humanity who has a natural immunity to a virus. And Julie just, just so happens, even though she got sick with it, she, and it started to control her just a little bit, her immune system is able to fight it off. So while Max is unfortunately succumbing to this virus, she is able to fight it off, and she um, actually kills Max because she knows that if uh, Max can spread this disease, it's going to kill the rest of humanity, but um, she's already fought it off. And now she might be a carrier, but she's not going to be able to spread it because she knows that uh, she has it. Um, one of the things that starts happening with Julie is that she, because she already has a little, she already had a little bit of connection with these AIs, and she starts using this and practicing it, and she's starting to learn that she can not control these AIs, but she starts to understand what they're doing in their own whole hive mind. And that's what I got. Okay, so we got it's like ten two, and we're supposed to stop it. Uh -huh. So that was a beautiful ending to a long story. Was the next I really problem. thought this was successful and enjoyable, and all that. So my goal has been that now I have another one of these um, sun, uh, Saturday at uh, would be uh, five p.m. in the Board of Trustees. See, that's this one. Okay, so we're at five. Yeah, it's like I can tell stories when it's just me and her, but yeah. she's like around other people. I'm like, 